pixels, percentages, M's, REMs, CM, VH, VMAX, and more. There are a lot of ways of expressing length in CSS. Today we're going to be talking about CSS units. This video is a request by the DevTips patron community members, and I'll tell you more about the DevTips patron community at the end of the video, but for now, let's just get into it. There are 15 CSS units that are currently supported by browsers. Click on any one of these right now to jump to that spot in the video. You can separate these units into two categories, absolute lengths and relative lengths. Let's start with relative lengths. Relative lengths get their measurements based on something else. There are three things that relative units base their dimensions on. Their parents' dimensions, the currently declared font size, and the viewport dimensions. So let's start with one of the easiest ones to understand, percentages. Percentages are only relative length based on their parent. So let's say I have this blue parent and inside is a child. And I have this box here at 400 pixels by 400 pixels. That's the blue box. And let's say make the child a percentage of the parent. So I'll say width 50% and height 50%. Now the green box shows up and I see it's exactly 50% of the width and height of the blue box. Pretty simple, right? So let's take another child and put it in here. Let's put four children in here and make the width about 25%, not 250, 25, 25%. Now let's float these elements to the left. And now we see how most grid systems that you guys use operate. Just remember to clear fix those rows. Now let's see what happens if we take one of these children and um, let's get rid of this floating. And let's just say the width is 125%. You see how the child will actually break outside of its parent because it's 125% of its parent. So it's going to go even further than the dimensions of its parent. Now, sometimes you'll make the, the child 100% and you get this perfect fitting. The, the child will stretch to fill the, the parent exactly. But then you'll come along and you'll say padding is, uh, you know, 20 pixels. And then your little child is, is kind of breaking outside of the, of the borders of the parent. That's because the size of that child is calculated on the inner box and then you're putting padding around it. So to fix that, you'll just do this quick fix of um, box sizing and reset the box sizing to border box. And now it'll still be 100% and have its padding in there. See, it has the padding. Cool, that's percentages. So let's move on. There are four units that are based on the dimensions of the browser viewport. Those are VW, VH, VMIN, and VMAX. The first two, VW and VH, they divide the viewport into a grid of 100 units. VW means viewport width. If you declare this element as the width is going to be 50 VWs, then you see that the, the width of the element is exactly 50% of the viewport. So let's shrink this viewport, and you can see that the element responds by growing and shrinking. Pretty exciting, huh? The same idea exists for the height. So if I go in here and say 50 viewport heights, then the element will stretch to exactly half of the viewport height, and then when I shrink it, it shrinks as well. And it doesn't need to be butting up against the edge of the browser like the width is. I mean, there's, there's space above it. It's just 50% of the height, no matter where it is on the page. And if you really want to have your mind blown, you can declare viewport width units on the height of elements and viewport height elements on the width of units and then be like, isn't that wild? You're like, oh my goodness, what? I can't even, I can't even. <laughs> All right, let's get into the next one, vmin and vmax. Uh, these ones are a little tricky. vmin and vmax stands for the viewport minimum or the viewport maximum, depending on which one you're using. And they get, their, they get their measurements from the viewport in the same way that VH and VW do, using that 100 uh, unit grid system. But this time, they reference either the height or the width, depending on which is the biggest or smallest, depending on which Vmax or Vmin you're using. Right? Let me show you what that means. Well, right now we can see that this element, Vmin, is set to width 50 Vmins. So 
this blue box is exactly equal to 50% of the shortest of the dimensions of this browser. We can see that the browser is taller than it is wide. So when I move the width of the browser, this element responds to be exactly 50 of the viewport units, right? Now let me shrink this browser from the bottom and you see that the element doesn't respond until until it becomes the smallest dimension, until the height of the browser becomes the smallest dimension. And now the width of this blue element is responding to the height of the browser because it is the smallest dimension. If I say, if I switch this and say uh, Vmax, it's gonna then respond to the width of this element because that's at this point the highest, uh, the, the longest dimension. And it will not respond to the height until the height becomes the the max viewport dimension, the, the biggest viewport dimension. Right there, see? I don't, I don't know what you would use this for, but it's very interesting. It makes more sense when you use it a bit, I would recommend using it. And all of these files that I'm using here are available for download if you're a member of the Patreon community. They're just attached right to the Patreon video. Now let's talk about the font relative lengths. There are four sizes that are based on the currently declared font. EX and CH is the one we're gonna look at right now. They're, I've never used these before, but let me tell you about them. First, let's talk about EX. EX is based on the height of the X of the font family that you're using, right? Now, why would they use the X? This is the typographic choice that goes back from a long time. The X is, the, is, a, is kind of a boxy character. It doesn't have any ascenders or descenders ever. And so uh, it's usually you'd, you'd reference the X height when you're designing a type family. So this measurement is based on the, 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 vi the visible dimension of the X. So I currently have this blue line set as the height of one EX. Let's change that to like two EX, uh, maybe five EX. Okay, now that's all well and good. It's exactly equal to five X's stacked on top of each other visually. Let's say that um, we want to change the font size to 30 pixels. Now because the X has grown, so does the height of the multiplied uh, blue box there. Now the height of the X can vary depending on what font family you're using. Some typographic styles have, have like a higher X height than others. For example, a, a modern type will have a different X height than like an old style family. Let me show you what I mean. If I pull up my inspector here and get my magnifying glass, let's measure this blue box. It's currently in pixels, rendering at 78 pixels tall. If I change this, uh, this style of the EX element to, let's say, font family um, serif, it changes, and let's look at it again, it's rendering at 67 pixels tall. So the height of that blue box became smaller simply because the font display style is a little bit different and the X is visibly a little smaller than it was in the sans serif version. Wild, huh? So that's the, that, so the X is based on the height of the X. The CH element, I don't know what CH stands for still, uh, but the CH element, let me change this 5X to 5CH. CH is based on the width of the zero element. I don't really have anything else to say other than that than, than the CH is based on the width of the zero element. So if you took this zero and kind of put it on its side, it would fit in the, in the height of that blue line. Let's move on. Uh, we're gonna talk about REMs and M's. REMs and M's actually get used a whole heck of a lot. Now M and REM are not based on any specific character inside of the font. In fact, they're not based on the font you have at all. So if you change the font family in the middle of your layout, it's not gonna break the layout. But it's based on a different font attribute, the font size. So in this example, I have a class of M here, this div, and I've set the font size to 10 picks for the example, the parent. And then I've set the width and the height to 1M. So when we come over here, there should be a little blue box here and if I inspect it, we can see that its dimension is 10 pixel by 10 pixel. So 1M is equal to, in this example, 10 pixels because the parent of the element that has 1M is 10 pixels. Now this scales, if I say 2M, it's gonna be 20 pixels by 20 pixels box. Let's save that and refresh. See that? A box that's 20 pixels by 20 pixels because it's a multiplying, 2M is a multiplier of the, the original 10 pixel example right here. Now, the interesting thing about 
m's is that they cascade. So if I write here, let's just write 2m in this box. And uh, let's put some more m's inside of these m's. It's like the m, they're, they're m's in m's, basically. m's in m's. Let's close off these divs. I'm using HTML tonight so that everyone can follow along with basic stuff like this. Okay, so the font size is going to be equal to 1M right now. Let's just change this font size to 1M. Now let's change it to 2M, sorry. Okay, but this is the catch though. M's cascade. For example, here, if you set a child to say 2M and then put it inside of a parent that's 2M, the child will multiply to be, to be equal to 4M. It's pretty wild, huh? So you have to be careful using M's because your layout might break depending on where you put things in the layout. An H1 might not always be the same size depending on what its parent is. So this example here, number five, M and Rem, is one of the most like interesting to play with because you can just change the example font size and see how it propagates through it. I'd recommend diving into these files and just messing with them for a while to really understand this concept. But next, let's duplicate this and talk about Rems. So duplicate, and we're gonna call it uh, Rems. Okay, and then go down in here, create a new font style called rems. Okay, now rems are a little bit easier to comprehend. And yeah. they do not cascade and multiply. Rem means root m. So they're based on the root element. If I go into this uh, base sass here, you see that I've, I've declared the root as font size 10 pixels. Now, I can change the, the font size to 30 pixels here and it'll affect the M's, but it will not if affect the roots. These, these bottom ones here, let me put some, put some line breaks here, quickly move these down. Okay, so these rems here are not affected by how I mess with the parent's font size. So in effect, they're a little bit easier to wrangle. What they are affected by is that root font size. And also they don't cascade. So even so they're inside each other, like the M's were, they're not basing the new REM off of what its parent was. They're, they're always gonna remain the same. So REMs are used a lot in responsive design grids when you want to change everything at once. So for example, if I have a font size here that's, that's two REMs, uh, let's make it five REMs, and a width that's five REMs, it's gonna be just so much, right? 50 pixels is the width. But if I go in here and change the root size to be like 50, it's gonna change everything across the layout for these rems. And that's really helpful in responsive web design when you want all of the fonts just to kind of crunch down just a little bit more for a mobile size or expand wider for a larger browser window. It's a really easy way to, to change the whole layout with one little de declaration. All right, next let's talk about absolute lengths. Absolute lengths get their names because they don't base their dimensions on anything else, right? They don't base it on the parent, and they don't base it on another font. They base it on real world dimensions. And these, a lot of these are gonna be great for use in, in printing. But let me show you what we have exact, exactly here. Um, we have inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, and picas. Uh, you're familiar with these, right, in the real world. And here in this, uh, here in this example, I've set them all to be just three of whatever. So inches is three inches, three centimeters, three millimeters, three points, and three picas. Now, if you're not familiar with points and picas, these are typographic terms, and I don't, well, you might be familiar with points, actually, when you, in your word processor, when you say, oh, I want a 12-point font, a point is actually a physical measurement. I don't know if you knew that or not, but when you're, yeah, when you're selecting points in your, in your word processor, you're actually talking about physical dimensions of the printed example. A point is 1 of an inch. It's really small. So when you say three points, that's why it's the smallest one here. And a pica is 12 points, or in other words, a sixth of an inch. 
Points in pikas are measurements used by typesetters back in the day, and they've just kind of worked their way into CSS because you might use these measurements more in a, um, like a print style sheet or something like that. And the last absolute dimension is pixels. Pixels you should be already familiar with. Pixels are awesome. The pixels, even though they're absolute dimensions, they're not based on you know the viewport width or another font size. They are best thought as device pixels because this, the, the size of a pixel can, can vary depending on your device, right? If you have a, a high density cell phone screen or a, a low density monitor like the one I'm using here. Pixels are the measurement that I feel the most comfortable thinking in. They are the, the canonical measurement of the web. You'll find the idea of pixels across all devices and in all stacks and in fact, other links map directly to pixels. You notice that when I inspected Element on a lot of the examples that I was showing you today, they all rendered in pixels. JavaScript talks in pixels. So for that reason, pixels are kind of the most commonly used CSS units. And right here we have exactly what you would imagine it to be, um, a box that's 200 pixels wide, and we change it to 400 pixels wide, and it's just 400 pixels wider now. Surprise! Fun fact, my first computer monitor had a pixel grid of 640 by 480. All right, that's it for CSS units. Again, if you are a member of the Patreon community, you can just log in and, and find this video in the, in the activity feed and download all of these files to play around with and kind of get your hands dirty with them. And if you're not yet a patron, I will tell you about that in a second. And there you have it, the CSS links. Thank you so much for watching the Dev Tip Show. The Dev Tip Show is supported by these wonderful people here. These are my patrons. As I said earlier, this episode itself was a request from people who are in the community. And you can go to patreon.com slash devtips to find out more about joining the Patreon community. And that's all I have for you tonight. But I want you to remember to keep on hacking.